the summer of 1940, the Battle of Britain raged in the skies over southern England. During the struggle, Churchill was the voice of what he called the lion-hearted British people, and said that through his speeches, he was able to give the lion its roar. According to his private secretary, John Cole, he would invest one hour of preparation for every minute of delivery. And so for a major set piece speech in the House of Commons, uh, running to 45 or 50 minutes, we're talking of 45 or 50 hours of preparation uh, while fighting Hitler at the same time. He uh, instructed me to go outside and get some fresh air into my lungs because we were going to work late that night. So I did that. And I sat down and waited. And then he got up and he started dictating. The gratitude of every home in our island, in our empire, and indeed throughout the world, goes out to the British airmen, who, undaunted by odds, and I wrote and wrote and wrote, and he went on and on, and he walked round the table and round the table. By their prowess and by their devotion. And I didn't interfere in any way. I didn't ask anything, what did you say? Because I could see he was in full flight. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. All hearts go out to the fighter pilots brilliant actions we see with our own eyes day after day. But we must never forget, night after night, our bomber squadrons travel past... Sometimes his voice would drop half an octave and there'd be a harsh note. That bad man. When speaking of Hitler. We cannot tell what lies ahead. It may be that even greater ordeals lie before us. And I can remember now, I sat there writing and writing and thinking, oh my goodness, let me get all this down. And we went on and on and on. And after a bit, he swung round on me and he said, are you tired? I said, no, no, I'm not tired. Because I was getting steamed up too, you see. And he said, we must go on and on like the gun horses till we drop. Finding themselves alone, stood undismayed against of the Nazi power. No one flinch is the noblest prize of victory. Whose unflinching are still toil. I hope, indeed, I pray, looking out upon the future. Like the Mississippi, it just keeps rolling along, good men. Let it roll, free men. Let it roll on, full flood, inexorable, irresistible, benign, to broader lands and better days. And then the time went on and I heard a sleepy note coming in his voice. And then all of a sudden he dropped all the histrionics and he sounded quite dead level again and he said, oh well, that's enough for tonight. Now you can go to bed, it was half past four. You needn't type that out tonight, you can do it in the morning. I thought that was very kind of him. 